my name is Tony Baca. I'm the Senior Vice President of Safety at Berglund Construction Company. And this week's safety talk is on fall protection. We're in this late August, early September timeframe of 2022. We're at peak season and today we have roughly 60, potentially 70 suspended scaffolds on tall buildings throughout the Midwest region of this country. And I thought it would be politically correct to at least touch base on fall protection. Now, when we train our fall protection standard in our annual OSHA 30 hour, we cover fall protection for about three hours. And the reason that we cover fall protection for such a vast amount of time is because fall protection just isn't about wearing a harness and working on leading edge. It's about whole covers on floors needing to withstand twice the intended load. It's about guardrail systems with top rails at 42 inches, mid rails at 21 inches, tow boards that are three and a half inches high, and then each one of them needs to have a, a parameter of a load against it or deflection on the top of it. We're not gonna talk much about that. We're gonna talk more about fall protection on suspended boards and leading edge type work. And then harnesses, lanyards, anchor points, some of the hot topic. Now, when I give an individual a new hire that comes in for a job opportunity here at Bergling Construction Company, and I give him a harness, this is a medium size harness. It's got the chest strap, it's got the leg straps that fit my legs. This harness fits my person. And if you recognize, the D-ring is between my shoulder blades. What I'm finding out there is a lot of guys are wearing a harness that is too small or it's too large. The harness has to be fitted to the person. Keeping in mind, if that person is a very large person, he might need a specialty design harness for that weight category of persons, but we don't typically have that this particular season with our company. But when I'm wearing a harness, I should inspect my harness prior to every use. Am I doing any burning and welding with my harness? Is it pitted? from the slag? Am I using grease or solvents that could disrupt the integrity of my harness? Um, has anyone taken a pocket knife and made the leg straps uh, more amp so that I can get them tighter on my legs? The manipulation of a harness? This is what you're relying on to save your life. And a lot of us reflect on, okay, I'm wearing a harness, I need to be tied off to something. So they find a structural member and they could be using a beam skate as an anchor point. They could be using an RB anchor, a 5,000 pound engineered anchor point. They might even consider using something like a beam wrap, which is an engineered wrap that you could wrap around a structural member and affix your lanyard to. In most trades, peoples, they prefer a lanyard. But here's the catch. If I'm tied off to a 5,000 pound anchor point over my head, which is preferred, right? We should always be tied off over shoulder height. And I slip and fall off of any edge, per se, into a shaft, off my suspended board, whatever the case might be, how far am I gonna fall? And they call that calculating your fall distance. Because this is a six foot shock absorbing lanyard attached to my D-ring at my shoulder height, but it's six feet in length and it's gonna open three and a half feet. And my D-ring is five feet off of the ground. In other words, with a little bit of slack, I'm going to fall 100% of the time using a shock absorbing lanyard. I'm gonna fall 100% of the time, 15 feet. So if I'm only working 12 feet above the ground or 12 feet on a leading edge before I hit a lower elevation, this is not the right application. I did not calculate my fall distance. In that case, I should be moving over to a retractable, affixed 
to a 5,000 pound anchor point over my head. And then the retractable goes directly to your D-ring, not to a shock absorbing lanyard. It says right on small print, this goes right to your D-ring between your shoulder blades. And then if I was to slip, this activates within 18 inches. So if I'm working 12 feet above zero, zero, the retractable is the better application for means and measures. But a lot to take into consideration. The inspection of my harness, the inspection of my lanyard, the inspection of my retractable. You know, every one of us needs to inspect this before each use because we're relying on this as a last line of defense if something were to happen and we end up going over an edge of sorts. So let's make sure we're doing our due diligence. You know, throughout the years, I've collected miscellaneous on job sites, and I collected this harness here. I got it off of a particular tradesman that was erecting steel. And, he, and I said to him, where did you get this? He was in his mid-40s. He got this harness in his apprenticeship program when he was 18. He had been wearing this harness for 20 years plus. It's weathered, it's thin, it's been through all kinds of weather and so on and so forth. It's outdated. What is the life expectancy of a harness? Depends on how much we use it and what the task is at hand that we're doing. But typically it's not more than three or four years if you're wearing this often in the elements. So please take this old stuff out of service before I take it out of service for you. Now, if I can't reach my D-ring in the back, there are these things called a D-ring extender. I can put this on my D-ring and then I can throw it over my shoulder and attach my lanyard to it. But I have to remember this increases my fall distance by roughly 12 to 18 inches. So that has to be taken into consideration. And then when I'm working on suspended boards and I'm using lifelines, this goes on the lifeline, this goes to my D-ring on my shoulder. It's only three feet in length, it's got a little shock absorber in it. But remember, if I'm on a 500 foot building and I'm down the side of the building from the top about 250 feet and something happens to my suspended board and I become falling per se, the rope is going to stretch about 3%. In 250 feet, that could be seven, eight feet. Plus, I've got the deceleration device in this lanyard. Do you know, once again, I'm fall falling 12 to 15 feet before I take all the stretch out of that rope and bounce back up a little bit. So, you know, we need to talk a little bit about fall arrest. We need to talk about pendulum effect on the fact that when you do finally activate your entire system, that you might swing and hit a column. You might go into a window or, or a precast side of a building. Are you gonna be okay? Because with the volume of pressure on these straps on your legs, your two largest uh, vessels in your body are your femoral arteries, right? And you're, you're restricting them from flowing and you're not pumping oxygen into the rest of your body because of that restriction, which is called suspension trauma. So an individual that's suspended in the air waiting for rescue may have difficulty breathing or staying conscious for more than 15 minutes. So it's our emergency plan in those situations. A lot of times it's 911 and calling the fire department unless you have another application on the job that you can get up to that individual. Maybe a boom lift or a crane and a man basket, something of that nature. Lot to discuss here in regard to fall protection, personal protective equipment as you see a lot of it here in front of you. Remember your anchor points have to be 5,000 pound anchor points. It can't be tied off to a ladder uh, a ship's ladder on a building, you know, that's uh, bolted into mortar joints, stuff like that. That doesn't meet the requirement. So today, let's talk amongst our crew about the condition of our harnesses, the inspection of all of our applications, confirming that we're tied off to a 5,000 pound anchor point, that we're wearing these properly, and that our D-ring is between our shoulder blades, Share some stories about fall protection if you have any with your crew. That's how we all become better at 
our knowledge base of fall protection in regard to personal protective equipment. Let's have a safe day and let's have a safe week. Thank you. Thank you.